Um, wow, that's a lot of armies. This is the true test of the Reichsguard stack. This is like a million infantry. We have the Kemmler. Uh, I think the Kemmler army is really the only one we have to kill though. How am I going to pull this one off? Dude. Dude. Yo, it's going to be... If I pull this one off, okay guys? Uh, you know what? Let's not corner Camp Cheese. If I win this battle, I deserve to make a video that is called 20 Reichsguard, okay? And one great sword because Jockberg is here. But but I feel like that's the case, all right? So in in assumption that we're actually making a video on this because I totally know I'm going to win this battle. Let's explain exactly what's going on here. We got super buffed up Reichsguard by France. 60 melee attack, 53 melee defense. They are basically chosen on cavalry. Um, unbuffed chosen, but regardless, they also have 97 charge bonus, which means all you have to do is nail your charges and you'll be fine. And with the vampire counts, it's pretty easy. Like this army, because I'm fighting about four armies at the same time, a normal ranged army would typically get overwhelmed here. And my theory when it comes to the vampire counts is that the way to defeat them is to go for, uh, is to go for a much much heavier melee style of play. Alternatively, you can go for heroes too, but I think that's a little bit boring, so we're going to be doing this instead. The goal is to essentially use my mobility to bait out all of their all of their mobile units. And then from there, after we've killed off all the Vargais, we've killed off all the heroes, then I just cycle charge their infantry to death. And what I found is that this army is dramatically stronger than ranged armies, but we'll see how wrong I am. Five euros if you can pull this off. I think it's I think this is way easier than uh than a lot of other than a lot of other uh battles that um like I think this is easier than when I had to kill like 20 of our guys that were constantly landing charges on my knights. We'll see though. Everyone's real skeptical. Everyone's really skeptical, but I feel like this should be a cakewalk. Now, I did say that with my ranged armies and was completely wrong, but I feel like I've become a better Warhammer player. I feel like I, I, I understand how to do this properly now. Also, I have a bright wizard, so um, he should be he should be pretty good infantry clear, I think. Alright, nice. So we do have a few zombies here. Thankfully, they don't do too much damage to my knights. And I can just sort of ward them off with cycle charging. Just reducing the damage as much as possible there. As for Kemmler, he his mobile stuff isn't here yet, thankfully. So I do have a little bit of time to just sort of chill here. We're going to throw down the Flaming Sword. Just because I have a lot of coverage here with my units. It doesn't do that much damage. Like, honestly, an Overcast Burning Head here is probably way more useful. Uh, but regardless, I'm just... I just want to kill the mobility as fast as humanly possible. You're also noticing that I'm leaving a lot of sort of knights in the back to land charges. Um, so that if my knights get countercharged, we can get a lot of damage back on these guys. Alright, nice. The mobility is down. We can now begin to pull away. And now that it's mostly infantry, uh, I think the easy part starts happening. I guess we do still have like a million hex rays that are waiting to come on. Let's see, where are they at? Yeah, there we go. We have like, uh, we have five hex rates and like a terror geist, but I'm not worried, guys. I'm not worried. Anyone taking part in the, in the mobile tourney? In the mobile tourney? What's the mobile tourney? Flamestorm in the blob? Oh, yes. Great minds think alike. Yeah, the infantry, honestly, this is the thing. If you go for a range build, the infantry become a problem. If you go max cavalry, the infantry just uh, just aren't really too bad because you can constantly keep away from them. Uh, the domination tournament. <laughs> there you go. Oops, my brain. The domination tournament in 10 minutes. I'm probably not. Today's actually sort of my day off. It's really weird. I felt like streaming today. Um, I felt like streaming today and this is how I'm... This is how I'm sort of sitting back and relaxing. Um, because if I if I really want to be working hard right now, I should be making more videos. Because, uh, like, right now I'm doing a lot of clips. and uh, But, like, the stuff that most people watch on my YouTube channel is, like, proper videos. Newbie tournament anyways. <laughs> oh, it's a newbie tournament. <laughs> ah, yes, post shot. Yeah, yo, just start smurfing. There you go. That's how, that's how you get... Take it the wins in. 
But are these black knights not a problem? Nice. So now all we got to do is we just got to pull away here. And uh, and the easy part begins. I think, honestly, so here here's the thing. I think this is actually win. Like, I think a lot of people in chat could pull off this strategy. If they, well, I think if they can just get past the initial part. The, the first part is the hardest part where you have to, um, the first part's the hardest where you have to deal with the, um, sort of the, a lot of things at once. You have like, you know, you have the, jeez, I can't think. A lot, like you have a lot of guys charging you at once and then it's really easy to accidentally blob up. But I think at this point in the battle, if someone was to take over, the process would be pretty easy, right? You just run these guys to the far edges of the map, and then you just start getting picks wherever you can. Um, so I feel like that that part's pretty easy. I guess the initial part, though, is, like, the big deciding factor, though, right? If you do this wrong, you can totally get massacred, but... So maybe not a doom stack for everyone. I, I think I won't, I won't push for that. Um, because... <laughs> yeah, even the initial part had me a little bit stressed out. So <laughs> if I'm being a little bit stressed out, chat will probably... Right, it might not be as great. Though I don't want to underestimate chat. Maybe I just have a chat full of chads, you know. I guess I also have some hex rates coming on in, but the one practical use of Flaming Sword of Ruin is for killing hex rates, so we should be fine. You need a little bit of micro building your army? Yeah. You need, like, a little bit of micro. I, I don't know how much you... Like, I think it's less about your speed and it's more about sort of knowing how to move them efficiently. So, like, for me, right, that was two right clicks to move these guys into the next position I need to. Okay, three. Um, but, like, most people, when they're really, like, stressed out in RTS games, they tend to do this, right? So, they're like, oh, my knights need to go here. So, they, like, start spam clicking like that. And then they miss charges and they miss more important actions elsewhere. Um, this is sort of what I found in, in StarCraft 2 also. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jockberg. There was no retreat path. He's totally, he, he's totally dead. But um, regardless, regardless, uh, yeah, I find it's mostly people are really inefficient with their clicking rather than you needing to be like the fastest man on earth. Um, but it does take a lot of efficiency and sort of good, uh, I guess, like, I don't know. It's not like presence of mind, but like you need to be very, you need to be very not panicked to, uh, to actually move you guys properly. Regardless, though, this is going great. This battle's been going great right now. Like, look at this. France has annihilated their lords. I'm not worried about that. We have our Reichsguard, of course, are doing great first. The cavalry here. Bright Wizard is just helping them clean up. And then maybe if I can get these guys to blob up on me, we'd be good. I'm going to get another Flaming Sword here to deal with these guys. And then these ones, I'll see if I can hit them with, uh, maybe just like a generic spell. I need to get France to kill Kemler, though. He's, he's been riding for too long. Let's see. What's a good spell that can go here? Is Burning Head good against Hex Rates? They still have, like, pretty decent HP, I think. Eh, it's good enough. I can, I can live with that. But yeah, like, I think if you play it super safe, you should be fine. Like, if you constantly bounce your cavalry from the top of the map to the other side, especially on a huge map like this, it does get a lot more manageable uh, dealing with the infantry. I, I don't know, maybe there's something Maybe there's something to do with, like, the hex rates. The hex rates and the, um, and the... Or, I mean, like, maybe there's something about, like, getting stuck in infantry and pulling out of there. Um, but, like, after you charge, if you just, like, take a look at what I'm doing, I'm basically just landing the charge and pulling out immediately if I want to stall the infantry. And I charge and stick around if I want to actually be winning the fight. Um, but otherwise, it's not too complicated. You just have to make sure that you're constantly cycle charging with the cavalry. And then as soon as the infantry start getting too close, you either pull away or you throw down an AoE. Or both. Or both. All, all solutions will work fairly well. I like the sound when I click my mouse. <laughs> you know, that is that is reasonable. That is a very reasonable stance to take, and, and I can't argue against that. Yeah, very true. Um, it is sort of weird, though, because in some cases, 
So another micro tip, I guess. You do want to be spam clicking if your knights are engaged in melee. Um, because they'll they'll tend to re-leash onto the enemy if they take too many hits. So to make sure that they don't just turn around and get massacred, um, you do have to make sure that they actually disengage. And after they've disengaged, then you don't have to babysit them as much and you just give them a big move command. Alright, nice. Looks like this has gone pretty well over here. Fran's gonna deal with the Terror Geist. And then... I think he can solo the Terror Geist. I don't think I have to really worry about that. Yeah, so... <laughs> I guess uh, my rule of thumb... Yeah, this is good. This is good. As I, as I play the battle, I can sort of explain what I'm doing here, right? So... You want to be you want to be minimizing your actions for guys that are not in combat, and you want to be maximizing your APM. That's actions per minute for guys who are in combat. Um, but generally, like if they're just like if you want them to attack, you just give them one right click and you're good to go. And then like for these guys who are in much bigger trouble, I'm gonna be like I'm gonna be microing them a lot more. Um, and then of course a lot of it is just finding good picks with friends. Um, which I'm pretty sure most people here are good with, right? If you're used to, you know, just cheesing normally, using a big old single entity to snipe out targets is great. Um, the bigger problem is sort of maneuvering your cavalry. Uh, and, yeah, you just wanna, you just wanna run to the opposite end of the map, and then, like, times four to get some good distance from, uh, from all these guys. Yeah, you can see here, right? I grabbed all my knights, a few of them actually stuck around because they were bogged down. I think I should be able to save them, though. Usually, if your knights are sticking together, if, if you ever have knights in a bad position, more knights can solve the problem. So, like, these guys were getting caught up by these uh, black knights here, and I just send in a couple more to bail them out. It's also really good for friends. At times, the AI will try to snipe your lord and get a full surround. But because your knights actually do have fairly good mass, and because your single entities can walk through friendly units much easier than other guys... Um, then, then the enemy units, I mean. It's really good to just, uh, to just, like, charge in with knights, run away with your single entity, and then disengage with your knights. This is indeed sort of a case study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially with how many people thought that this would be, like, impossible. This is actually gonna end up being one of the easier battles in this entire campaign. Uh, but yeah, so, like, I'm just gonna pull away here, right? And then just get to, like, the edge of the map. Then if I do this, we just sort of sneak along. And they don't really get too close. You can see. The guys that are close to melee need a lot of babysitting. They can leash onto the enemy so easily. But yeah, there we go. The VAR guys are down. And then... Is there any more Lord sniping to do? I guess not really. There is like a little bit of Kemmler action. But you have to be really careful about getting surrounded by infantry. There's a high chance that you just get martyred. Unless they're like isolated. So in this case, because there's no Black Knights, it's safe to charge in. Had there been Black Knights, like, earlier in the battle, I would ensure that France has backup cavalry to, uh, to save them in case anything goes wrong. That's one of the main jobs of the cavalry. Also, debug camera helps, because you can zoom out and then maneuver on a bigger battlefield. Splitting up your cavalry into two sections is also great, because it tends to split the AI army into multiple areas, and it helps you sort of single them out. It creates gaps like this over here. Where you can sort of sneak through, just like right down the middle if you wanted to. And it just makes sure that you don't get caught up in the corner of the map. Because like if I just kept running along this edge, it'd be a little bit scary. It seems like the AI might be like aggroing onto these guys or something. So they're not really pulling to the edge. So it's mostly fine. Yeah, at this point, uh, honestly at this point, I think, it, I think it's done. I think it's over. Like Fran just kills Kemler on his own. And then, uh, and then from there, I can start using my knights again to get a lot of damage. But yeah, you can see. You can see you just hug the edges of the map. The AI tends to end up chasing towards the middle. Um, or towards your army. So, like, you want to keep moving, which is very important. But um, it's not too bad. And thankfully, this map is massive. This map is absolutely massive. So, you just pull, like, you know. It, it makes it a lot easier. On some maps, it's way harder to do this. But uh, luckily for us here, we have a lot of maneuverability. You can see here, situation like this. Accidentally landed in two Vargals. I thought it was only one. So Franz is in like a little bit of a scary situation. This is where we bring in the knights to sort of save him. Alternatively, I can try to run away with them. But 
this will be more important. And like while my guys are making the transition, I can safely, you know, micro these guys a bit. Um, and yeah, it, it does it does take a little bit of work. The more the more I play this battle, the more I'm seeing how much like how many small decisions I'm making to make this go well. But regardless, regardless, hopefully it inspires someone to go for max cavalry on France. And there we go. You can see with like even a little bit of support. Suddenly, Franz went from like, oh, he might be dying to like, this is like the easiest thing ever. Because now he, now he has all those Reichsguard. So if you want to play even more efficiently, you, you play with Franz and Reichsguard. And then you go for plays like this where you get some huge surround. That plus a few buffs and, and you're good to go. And then you can see anytime I get close to the map, I just split in two and go in opposite directions. Very, very simple maneuvering. Also Kemler, yeah. Kemler, he, he summoned he summoned some zombies and then France aggroed on them. But uh, regardless, now we're at the we're at a pretty easy part of the battle now. It's all infantry. And you know what? The plan is the plan is we're just gonna start getting picks here. I could go for Kemler. Honestly. He the AI's been keeping him pretty safe. Unless I get a big cavalry surround, uh he's gonna be a pain. I just noticed he does have the infinite Krell. So, I do have to be a little bit wary of that. If you want to deal with single entities with friends uh, safely, you just need to make sure that, like, you have a, a unit of... You want to make sure you have a unit of, of something sort of supporting him. And this sort of draws a lot of attention away from the single entity, because uh, they might land hits on your cavalry instead. And then friends with, like, a big charge on them should be able to kill them. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure. Krell is a bit of a beast, though, so... Yeah, okay, we're, we're gonna pull back. <laughs> we got a couple charges there, but Krell's a bit of a pain. You know what? Honestly, we've killed everything else. It might even be easier just to kill off all the infantry first, and then just have them crumble from army losses. I I do I genuinely think that's gonna be a much, much easier way to end this battle, because, because Krell do be scary. A fully maxed out Kemlor and Krell is, uh, is, pretty, is pretty spicy. Yeah, and then of course, um, so you can, against zombies, you don't have to have the most elegant surrounds on them. Against something like Graveguard, you do have to be a little bit more careful. But uh, as long as you manage to get a full surround on them with friends, you should be fine. You know, I can show off. I can show off generally how you want to do that too. Here we go. So like, I, you know, you send friends in here, right? You wait for them to blob up a tiny bit. And then you get your sort of full cavalry surround on them. In this case, there's a little bit too much infantry. But uh, let's see. It's mostly skeleton warriors and crypt ghouls. So I don't have to worry about getting stuck in them. Had it been Graveguard, I'd be a little bit more worried about going into this fight. But this should, this should be fine. What are people's issue with the Call of France campaign? Uh, mostly the fact that it's really hard to get your main mechanic going, which is sort of your Elector Count system. I think a lot of people... A lot of people have a hard time maintaining the Empire and they reach like zero Imperial Authority. And people really don't like getting to Imperial Authority. Because it feels like you're just getting punished and you can't prevent it from happening. Um, and also, you have a lot more enemies than you used to, so it feels, uh, I think it's just, it feels like a pretty tough campaign overall. I think, I think those are the main issues. Um, also, you don't, you don't get a wizard until tier 4. There's also that. <laughs> yeah, so France campaign, on top of sort of being slightly, uh, slightly, um, bugged, or, yeah, like, bugged where you're just missing a quest battle, it's also... It's also getting uh, shafted in terms of in terms of how the balance originally was. The campaign is much harder than it used to be. But yeah, you can see here, once you get like enough cavalry just blobbed up onto like a few units of infantry, they just start wrecking face. Alright, nice. And then after like, you know, after you get them to crumbling, they just disengage. Yeah, just disengage. Another important thing, you also really want to. Um, you only want to ever charge a unit with, like, a couple cavalry at once. It's always better to take the time to get some cycle charging in. Because, like, had they all been blobbed, I wouldn't be able to counter charge these bats. And I also wouldn't be able to get this charge on the Black Knights. Because it might feel like you want to get all of your infantry, 
or all of your units in melee as quick as possible to get as much damage as possible. But because um, because of how the game works, only the front line of units attack, um, blobbing up does not increase your damage at all. So it's always better to take that time for the surround. Never, ever blob up your units, unless you're lazy. Like, these are zombies, so it doesn't matter. But otherwise, you don't want to be blobbing up. You can even... If you, if you want it to be even more efficient here, you can kill near, like, infinite numbers of, of enemy units if you just, uh... If you just, like, take some time to replenish your vigor. Okay, yeah, so those guys are, like, crumbling down and basically dead now. So, like, if you really wanted to crush it and make sure that your knights take as little damage as humanly possible... Like, if this was Legend of Total War against, like, I don't know, like, ten stacks of infantry... What you do is you pull over here, and then you just sit back for a second and let your Vigor replenish. So, like, I can just go here and just, like, wait for a bit. Vigor replenishes actually fairly quickly if you're idling. So, like, if you wait for even a minute, you should be able to get to max Vigor on all of these guys. And the AI tends to constantly be in March stance. So, they tend to get pretty pretty low on, on Vigor. So, like, you're, you're basically having fresh troops against guys that have, you know, 30... 30% or so less melee defense, 30% less melee attack. Makes it way easier. Blobbing decreases the damage your units take. It doesn't decrease the... what's it? It technically decreases the damage you would take had you been do, going for a full surround, right? But like, uh... It's, it's, gen, it's generally not recommended unless you have like a specific bonus that you get for taking less damage. Oh, hey, this is actually a perfect opportunity. So, like, you know, we got some Grave Guard here. I have, like, a million Knights on the surround, so I can just, like, I can hammer them from every single direction. And that should be able to just annihilate them. Like, you can see, look at that. Because I just have so many, they're so spread out because of the Knights, right? You have, like, each and every single entity is basically fully surrounded there and taking hits. And they just get massacred there. So, like, even though my knights technically don't have uh, armor piercing, they still do perfectly fine against against Graveguard. Um, but, yeah, that, that's that's another great thing here. At this point, it's, it's sort of becoming a big blob, but, like, yeah, look at that. Like, you get one solid charge. The moment they stand back up, you have full coverage on them, and it's, it's great. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. One attack just, like, takes out the entire unit. Also really good for making sure that you get fewer casualties. Though I will say, I think I forgot some knights. <laughs> I think I forgot a couple knights. I think this one dies because he's three entities instead of four. Unfortunate, unfortunate. We've missed Microd, one of our knight, uh, knightly units. Regardless, though, here's the plan, guys. Here's the plan. I think, um, I think what we do here now, because the battle's basically over, and I don't think there's many more vampire counts after this. I think... We just, uh, ah, there's some Grave Guard here. I think we can still do it. I think we can still do it. So here's the plan. I can sort of start taking more aggressive fights here. Um, we could be more efficient, but we don't need to be that much more efficient. Um, we're just gonna just use Franz as the, as the anvil. And then use the Knights as the hammer. And that should be enough? I don't know. It, it depends. There's sort of a, a critical mass of Grave Guard that will become a big problem for my Knights. But I think Franz has got this one. Yeah, yeah, you can see there, right? There were like a few too many Grave Guard there. I didn't get full coverage. They didn't really crumble away. So you do have to be a little bit careful with this. You can't just like A move into the enemy. Um, yeah. Let's see here. We have another Grave Guard here. Zombies, Grave Guard. I'll see. I'll see if I can take out this area. Because we, we still have Franz here, right? And as long as they're not bracing, I should be able to get max damage in. And Franz, Franz actually brings in a lot of extra damage to the table to reduce their leadership. Oh, actually, there you go. Look at that. That's really army lost. Wow. Hey, look at that. Easy fight, guys. Easy fight. Gotta say, that went a lot smoother than even I thought it would. Sick. Yeah, blobbing decreases the damage your units take over, like, uh, just because it reduces the length of your front line. Um, it just has fewer units fighting, but like it doesn't mean that you're dealing more damage by blobbing It's just sort of uh, like just both sides are taking less damage If you have a mortis engine though, you usually want to be blobbing just because you get free aoe damage So like as Nurgle as Nurgle you blob up so hard and you'll annihilate 
You'll annihilate him. Okay, is this? Come on, Kembler. Man, the vampire counts. Their leadership is actually insane. They don't die from army losses. <laughs> but nice, there we go. I think I basically went over the gist of it. <laughs> Look at that kill death ratio. 264 losses. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> that is insanely cost efficient. Now, of course, they didn't have the scariest Doom Sacks ever. But uh, you gotta... You gotta hand it to me. It, it's like, this is... <laughs> that was a spicy... That was a spicy kill death ratio. What's that? That's like... 5,000? That's like 8,000? 8,000 kills for 250 units? 